the one D and D slash D and D six E slash updated five E slash whatever they end up calling it be available on other virtual tabletops such as Roll20 and Foundry, ETT. Like, are they gonna put their updated rule system on Roll20 and other places so that people, if they're over there, they could play over there? That's the question that comes to your mind, right? There is this Unreal Engine virtual tabletop, and supposedly it hasn't been getting a super great reception um, we've had some videos come out. Dungeon Craft was saying that there wasn't a great reception of it. Ted from Nerd Immersion, uh, he has access to the Alpha Edition, and he I, he's an, he's under an NDA and probably can't show anything or something. But he was did a video talking about it. There were some things that were lacking on it, and then there was also so that's what we know about their vir their Unreal Engine virtual tabletop. But it's just an alpha. Supposedly, it's supposed to get better, right? As they iterate on it, as they develop it and improve it. But right now, it appears that it's not getting the best reviews, but it's an alpha, so look, what do you want? Then a couple days ago, it was just a couple days ago, we literally found out that they had been working on a D&D Beyond Maps, which is what they're calling it, in the background, and I didn't know anything about it. I don't know if they've ever announced it before they just said like two days ago, here it is. And they're calling it D&D Beyond Maps, but it's it's a virtual tabletop. It's it is a virtual tabletop. If you look at it, you can put a map there. You can put your tokens there. Like you can, uh, it has all the functionality. I, I'm presuming, or at least most of it, of what you would expect from a virtual tabletop. So it's a virtual tabletop. Why they're calling it maps and not just a virtual tabletop? I suppose is so that there's not confusion between the Unreal Engine virtual tabletop and the D&D Beyond Maps virtual tabletop. It's kind of like you might get confused, like, okay, so one D&D that's coming out isn't actually, it's not one D&D anymore. It's not sixth edition. It's not 5.5. It's just fifth edition. So it's 5e, but it's different than what we have right now, which is called 5e. So it's kind of like you might get confused on that. Well, in the same way, you might get confused on like the Unreal Engine virtual tabletop and the D&D Beyond Maps virtual tabletop. And so they're not calling it a virtual tabletop, they're just calling it maps. But now you'll be like, well, is it any good? I have no idea because it requires you to have a master tier membership on D&D Beyond, I believe. And I canceled my D&D Beyond membership and I have not renewed it. So I do not have access to it. I cannot go in there to even look at it and see if it's any good. There's probably missing features, which is fair because it was released as an alpha. It's going to be missing features. So, which is brings me to one thing I do want to mention, which is the iterative development of this sort of thing. Like you don't just, you don't usually release something perfect, especially if you're calling it an alpha or even if it gets to a beta, it, it's never perfect. This is software development. It's iterative. You get something, you you have what you call a, most, a, a minimum viable product, an MVP and you put that out there. Well, here's the alpha. It kind of works. It's missing a whole bunch of stuff. Of course it is, but it kind of works. It's your mini your minimum viable product. There you go. You know, and then you and then you get feedback and stakeholders, which is the play testers, which is us. We're like, "Hey, it's missing this. It can't do this. It can't do this. It can't do this." And then they're like, "Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Let's let's get that in there. Let's get that over here and start working on it, right?" So this is the nature of software development. So it doesn't it should not be a shocker that the alphas are not perfect. So you're going to see videos out there where people are making a big deal out of like, oh my gosh, it's not, it's like, it's like the virtual tabletop just got worse. It's like, it's an alpha and we need to calm down. It's going to take them some while. This stuff isn't fast. So anyway, I want to, because I have a background in software development and I know a little bit of how these things work. I wasn't like a developer myself. I was just a, a scrum master, if you know what that is. I know enough to be dangerous. We got to give them time, you know? No. If they get time and it's like two years later and it's still a piece of garbage, then that's a different score story, right? Now, when I, this is crazy because when I learned like two days ago that they had released the D&D Beyond maps, I was like, the first thing I did is I asked my buddy Goliath Cleric, Zach, I was like, dude, why did they make another virtual tabletop? Like, they're already developing one of them. Why did they, why were they developing another one? That was my, that was my initial question. Why, why would you do that? And Zach, Zach was like, well, maybe it's to hedge their bets in case the Unreal Engine virtual tabletop flops. Maybe, you know, at least they have one that they have that's working in case the other one, I don't know, I mean, I, I suppose they spent millions, what I've been told when I've read 
is they've spent millions of dollars now working on their Unreal Virtual Tabletop. And so if that thing doesn't take hold and it doesn't get the reception or the user base that they're expecting, you know, well, then maybe they have this D&D Beyond Maps one, which probably didn't have a whole lot of development effort comparatively to the other one. I don't know. So maybe hedging their bets. But I think, too, that they're probably looking to get a head start on cornering the virtual tabletop market for D&D. So if they can put out if they can put out D&D maps or we'll just call it D&D Beyond Maps, even though it's a virtual tabletop. But if they can put that out right now and it integrates D&D Beyond characters directly into it, making that making character creation and then playing a virtual tabletop seamless process, if they can integrate that and put that out now, what that effectively does, it, it starts to give them that head start on pulling that virtual tabletop market. So people who play on World 20 could be tempted to go over to that, right? People who play on different virtual tabletops might start saying, hey, maybe we should just play D&D 5th edition over on D&D Beyond Maps because it integrates the character creation, which is a pretty useful feature, let's be honest. And so if they want to corner the market on virtual tabletops, then releasing this right now gets them a head start on that. And it starts to migrate people over. It starts to migrate them over to their ecosystem, right? Of being on D&D Beyond Maps and being on D&D Beyond. And obviously, if people aren't at the master tier subscription, they can go get the master tier subscription, which I think is five bucks a month. And then players and stuff can just play there. And so they start to leech away, you know, the user base from other virtual tabletops and get them in their own their own little garden right there. So getting a head start on that as opposed to waiting a year or two years, that could be very valuable from a business perspective, right? Just more revenue, more people coming over here. And then also not just that, but also if they're in your garden, if they're in your ecosystem on D&D Beyond Maps, when you release your virtual tabletop, the Unreal Engine virtual tabletop, there's probably a higher probability that those people are going to use the new one because it's new and fancy. They're already, it's like they're already in your yard, you know, and when you open the pool up, well, they're already in your yard, they might as well go swim in the pool, right? And so I think that's probably part of the rationale as well to have a second VTT right now as opposed to waiting for the Unreal Engine one, which could take a year or two or who knows how long that could take before it's like fleshed out enough to actually release one of the things that I've been thinking about or wondering about, and probably other people have as well, I suppose, is will one D will one D and D slash D and D six E slash updated five E slash whatever they end up calling it be available on other virtual tabletops such as Roll Twenty and Foundry BTT? Like, are they gonna put their updated rule system on Roll Twenty and other places so that people, if they're over there, they could play over there? That's the question that comes to your mind, right? And what I want to do is I want to play a little snippet from the video that uh, D&D Beyond released a couple days ago where they talk about this. They talk about this for about one minute or so. I'm going to play the snippet and then we're going to talk about it. Um, and I, But I want the important part here is that I want you to hear exactly what they say and then we're going to analyze it just a little bit. And so with maps, what you're going to see is Fans are bringing in their D&D Beyond characters onto maps and playing. And then the next day, they may take the same character and be playing it in the 3D VTT. And then the next day, they may be going over their friend's house and sitting around the table and playing again with the same character through their you know, mobile app. I love that. There are so many ways to play. And speaking of which, what does this mean for some of the other great ways to play like the other VTTs out there? Yeah, so, you know, we are committed to offering our D&D content wherever our fans want it. We are committed to offering our D&D content wherever our fans want it. We are committed to offering our D&D content wherever our fans want it. And we have great partners and we're happy with them. And we think this is just, again, giving players another choice of where they want to play. Well, there you go. There you go. I think, I think... That settles it, right? Like that completely settles it. They literally said, they literally said that they are committed, committed to letting their fans play wherever they want to play, right? Like if they want to play on Roll20, Foundry VTT, Owlbear, um, whatever else is out there, like Tailspire, like wherever you want to play, that's cool. And they're going to offer their D&D content out there and make sure they have the proper licensing and they're not going to, you know, 
block any of that type of stuff. You know, they've committed to it right here. They, they've said that. Now, this is probably a good time to bring up <laughs> that for 20 years, the open gaming license was considered unrevocable. For 20 years, it was not to be touched. When it was originally introduced by Wizards, it was deemed irrevocable. For 20 years, it stood there and nobody touched it. But then they decided otherwise. So I think there's probably... There are, I know that there are rumors and people talking about how when the updated 6th edition comes out, that it will not be available on Roll20 and it will not be available on Foundry VTT and other places. That if you, people have been talking about the idea that when the updated 5th edition rules come out, that you will only be able to play them in the D&D Wizards of the Coast ecosystem, whether it's on D&D Map, D&D Beyond Maps now, or whether it's on their Unreal Virtual Tabletop when it comes out. So people have been talking about that. And I think that this is probably a little, uh, uh, you know, 30 seconds of them trying to say, no, 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 that's not that we're that's not the case at all. They don't directly address that. They mention that you can you're committed to wherever you want to be and stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a cynical old man, but I don't know that I believe it. I, I just don't believe it. I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy to be wrong. When, when one D&D, 6th edition, whatever comes out and it, it is available wherever you want to play it and it's not just in their ecosystem, then I'm happy to be wrong because I think the more places you can play the game system, the better. Give people their choice. If I don't want to be on D&D Beyond or I don't want to have your Unreal Engine, let me play it on Foundry VTT or let me play it on Owlbear Rodeo. Like, I think people should have the ability to choose where to play it. I don't know that that's going to be the case, though. But, so, like, when I think about it and, and why I think that that's not going to be the case, the entire purpose of the open gaming license revision that they tried to do, the entire purpose, when they tried to change the OGL on us, the entire purpose was to create a walled garden, a closed ecosystem. They literally were trying to cut out other people that were creating D&D products, D&D resources. They were literally trying to cut them out. That was their goal. That was their goal. And then there was an upcry. People freaked out about it. And then they backed off and they backed off and they backed off. And they're like, well, okay, fine. Okay, fine. They gave up concession after concession after concession. But if you noticed, the last thing they were clinging to was in regard to the virtual tabletops. They gave people everything they wanted, except they were clinging to this idea of the, their open gaming license not applying to virtual tabletops. They didn't want people with spell animation effects and all of these sorts of things. Like they were like, it's not intended for that. They were clinging to that. They were clinging to that. Why? Because they've been developing their own virtual tabletop. And the entire purpose of the OGL was to exclude other people from developing content for D&D. &D. And the VTT was the last thing they clung to because they want that. Like that is the thing that they really want. They want people to have, if you want to play D&D, &D, to be in their ecosystem, inside their walled garden. Like that was the purpose of the OGL. That was exactly what they wanted to do. And when they were trying to get that stuff in there, it was the intention of making it so they were the sole place where you could go to play D&D &D and get D&D &D content. Now that all didn't work out so well. And it was creative, went to creative commons and stuff like that. So that was a, that didn't work. That didn't work. I think this is their plan B. They couldn't shut down other virtual tabletops through the OGL changes. Therefore, they just won't license sixth edition on other virtual tabletops. Their plan B is just, well, you know, if we, if we put out a new version of D and D and we don't give other places the license for it, well, then people have to come to our virtual tabletop to, d d Beyond Maps or the Unreal Engine Virtual Tabletop to play the game. We just don't license the new version out and then people have to come to us. And so then people will be there. They will be inside their ecosystem, inside their walled garden, spending money on their products. Like you guys, they're, they're spending millions. What I've read and been told is they're spending millions of dollars developing this Unreal Engine Virtual Tabletop. You know, like that's a huge, massive investment. And so you got to think that they really want people to play it. And if there's a simple way to make people so they have no choice but to use their products, it's to not license that product to other virtual tabletop competitors. You know, almost assuredly, now the, the fifth edition, current fifth edition, they might be true to what they just said in that video. 
and it stays licensed to other places so that you can play it wherever you want you know but the new updated sixth edition whatever they're going to legally call it um i don't think we're going to be able to play that elsewhere i just don't think we are there's too much stuff that points to the fact that we're not going to regardless of what smiling people say in videos. And don't forget, if you're a busy game master looking to reduce your prep time with 5th edition or Pathfinder 2 adventures, traps, puzzles, monsters, and other resources, consider becoming a DM Lair patron. Each month, you'll get a new issue of Lair Magazine filled with GM resources to help you run amazing games. And DM Lair patrons even get to play games with me. Click on the screen right here to become a patron or right up here to watch another fine DM Lair video. And until next time, happy game mastering.